But I think let's keep the AC. Right. Let's keep the air conditioning okay, yeah. it will be humid. Yes. Uh, somebody is there already two people. Oh, okay. one more. I, think this is, I don't know. Let me see if it's connected. Hi, Jay. Hi, Apratim. Hey. Hello. Hi, hello. I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry I missed okay. yesterday's lecture. Okay. But uh, yesterday was a holiday. And... It's a Friday, right? Did you know about that? Huh? Oh, okay. I'll speak some for. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday was actually some holiday and some religious. Uh... Yeah. So my daughter was at home from school. Yeah, no though, wonder. So... Still very late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not too late. Like we finished at about six, and students. Um... Surang. Surang. Yes, he explained. So you put. Loops that we already have plans. Uh, we'll also talk about. In, in fact, he. Uh, so he's uh, Ritam. He's not my student, but he okay. said he wants to do something. Okay. So he will take part of the things of putting uh, small loops on the okay. architectures to see whether uh, organization yeah. and traffic forces increases. Okay. Once you do that, we'll put in more complications. Like yeah. actually modeling it through things first, like yeah. we'll do it for dead yeah, systems. I don't know if it's actually necessary. It might not be, might not because you are actually adding the loops several times. So yeah, so first you will do image. without replication because that's simple. Yeah. Then measure the properties. Yeah. Then add um, add one complica one complication at a time. Okay. So that's how we do the modeling. We don't put in all complications, and then we don't know what hit us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, luckily for us, we have that uh, possibility to add one complication yeah. at a time and yeah, then look at course. its effects and yeah. the control manner. Right? And today we'll talk about some other thing uh, that Suyang has just started. Yeah. And yeah. um, get your feedback. And I want you to write an email to me. Yes. <laughs> so that I have your contact and sure, later sure. I will. Uh, uh, both yes. I and her yes. will want to learn something. Sure, sure. Definitely. And after we get the thing, she, she will be away for, uh, for five days. Right. Then, whatever yeah. she was saying yesterday about modeling, we'll revisit that. And because I didn't really yeah, understand. Yeah. We didn't. We I need need it. Help you as much as I know there are more people in the lab who no no I think you will be good enough. Okay. <laughs> I don't need them. Fine. So so people are ready, I think. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Of course, of course. Where should they sign here? Yes. Yeah, sure. It's a strategy with a J I, but it's oh, okay. 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 No, 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 everybody in the institute writes J E. So Mithun, we designed something also for Sunil to look at. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And they are. Okay. All right. <laughs> I hope today won't take too long. Um, so today I many will discuss um, two um cytoskeleton proteins one is called mreb of course this actually probably is not my best place to discuss this because you have experts right here <laughs> um, but i will give a just really bird's eye view over 
broad view of what MREB does and how does it determine cell shape. So the work that I'm going to discuss today, many coming from, again, the model organisms, the bacillus and the E. coli, and when some from clobacters, but there are, you know, MRB is so diversely functional, you know, um, has so many other functions, other bacterial species, and I think Gayathra uh, will be able to tell you more about that. Um, so as we talked before, MREB is an active homolog. Um, it's also, again, it was discovered quite some years ago, like I think almost 30 years ago by Jeff Arrington. So uh, MREB, you know, if it, if it is active, of course, it's a polymerase uh, inside the cell. But um, MREB was first discovered not as a cytoskeleton protein, but also as a shape mutant. So what was found is that if you don't have this gene inside the cell, if you delete MRAB, like rat-shaped bacterial cell, like bacillus or uh, E. coli, they just simply become round. And this is this gene actually turned out later on, of course, there are lots of studies on this particular protein. And it's really uh, interesting for this one single globular domain, I mean, I'm not joined correctly, but you know, has four domains. And you can actually mutate all those different um, sites of MREB, and you can actually tune the cell weight in E. coli. Sometimes, for example, like ATP, this is against ATP binding uh, protein, uh, ATPs. And if you mutate individual residue, along the surface, you can tune the cell uh, width, you know, to be gradually wider and wider. So like one single residue, and there's some other type of uh, residue mutation you can tune. They can become very, very thin. They can also become, you know, like odd shaped. They can also become branched. So this one single protein has so many- I think I didn't understand. I understood that it is Remove MRB, yeah. uh -huh. become spherical. Spherical, yes. But now this is the protein structure. This is just a one single protein molecule, like a crystal structure. Oh. That's what I'm showing that you can actually mutate individual residue in oh, this protein. And it, I'm trying to use this one as a way to illustrate how uh, interesting this protein is, like one single amino acid residue change, and you change the cell weight. You change the, you know, can become very thin, become very wide, become very uh, um, uh, deformed, and also can become bent. And sometimes you, your cell actually become uh, branched. So each of the residues somehow come. Yes, yeah, so we, we still don't know exactly what's the molecular mechanism for those, but those are all people believe coupled to the cell wall synthesis. Because in bacteria cell, when we talk about cell shape, for bacteria cells that have a cell wall, the cell shape is really determined by the cell wall, right? The the sugar. So the cell wall is, I mean, it's um it's a cross-linked peptoglycan meshwork. So if I draw over here, so if we take this one, so what people believe what happens? You have this uh, sugar, it's a dye sugar, and you have uh this is called the mermac. You don't know, need to know all of those names. This is called a gnitmac. You don't need to know all of those names, but um, this is just a two sugar unit and this is a peptide stain. So that's why this is called a uh, 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 peptidoglycan. So it's a glycan chain with a peptide. And the cell wall is really made by all of those chains. And then this one can polymerize, you know, multiple, multiple subunit like this. Very, okay, very regularly like this. Then you have this uh, Mernac peptide that can cross-link with another strand over here. So you can actually make some cross-linking. It's not every single one is cross-linked, but um, you, you like 50% of the peptides are cross-linked. So those glycan chains, actually there are measurements um, to show that the glycan chain is actually fairly rigid. So, um, but the peptide cross-link is very uh, flexible. 
So that actually is a very interesting point because based on what we know nowadays about bacteria cell wall, especially for gram active E. coli, the glycan chain is always oriented this way. So it's along short axis of cell. So that's why I think actually when cells grow, they tend to grow lengthwise because you have more flexibility between glycan strand that can be expanded. But along the waist dimension, it's much more rigid. It's harder to, to expand. And one thing is because you have a more rigid sugar structure, but another thing you have some uh, protein like MIB that's really regulates the cell width. What's the persistent length? Or rather, <laughs> the next question is, how okay. do you manage to do it? Uh, at the ends because there it is more bent and yes the whole package, so I, I think if it's this 50 percent is costly for the softness they will just Yes, very good. So I actually I was about to talk about all of those. Oh. So for for the cell wall even though we say that is a fairly uh, rigid, it's actually still fairly flexible. This is how you can actually strip off everything. You just peel everything off. It's like, you know, you have a squash, you get rid of all of those meat, then you end up with a mesh network. So that one has a certain rigidity. That's what keeps the cell shape. But if you tap onto it, it still can deflect. Lots of people have done AFM study to measure the stiffness of cell wall. I do not know what's a persistent length of cell wall, but based on my friends in mechanobiology, they think this, even though it's rigid uh, along the cell width, they think that this is still very soft. So itself it does not provide a particular mechanical force to push any membrane. So that, that's the thing. Now, of course, the uh, how the cell pole, the cell wall is organized, we do not really know, especially for gram positive. Nowadays, people still argue with each other, what's the cell wall uh, organization in gram positive bacteria? In E. coli, in gram negative, because it's such a thin layer and very, very tiny, uh, like about uh, a few nanometers in thickness, um, <laughs> even the best uh, cryo EM how ET work cannot really visualize exactly what the strands are oriented. But based on a lot about chemical study, you can more or less think that uh, it is horizontally, uh, not horizontal, along the short axis organized. And they're not so ordered. So what you end up in a cell wall, you don't end up with one glycan strand like wrapping around multiple times. You don't, you end up with multiple short ones that's interspaced with each other. So, so that's what we know about gram positive and active. For gram positive, we really do not know. We only know that the cell wall is very, very thick. Uh, you have multiple layers, but their argument, I mean, debate whether the glycan strand is standing, you know, along, you know, vertically to the surface or laying down horizontally. So we still do not know. But there are quite some FM studies in that you could have multiple strands form a long cable and then wrapping around the, the cell. So, but this is the major mechanical uh, barrier of the cell. It's not a diffusion barrier, but it's a mechanical barrier. Because this is really help the cells to, uh, 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 to protect the cell against the turgor pressure. Because if you strip off all the cell wall, the cell going to spall up like a sphere uh, blast. That's what people call it, so wall less bacteria. And that's in indicated that this wall, cell will actually contain all those pressure inside the cell, okay? So now coming back to the question of um, MREB, we talk about single one single point mutation can cause cell shape difference. But then the question of is, how how it does this. We know it must be somehow muted by the cell wall, but even till today, I don't think people know exactly why that single mutation, what is interacting, what is causing. But there are some very interesting observations over the years. I think the first one came um, when the filamentous structure of MRAB was solved. So MRAB, it's an acting homolog monomer structure is available, but after a while, uh, I mean, it, it was very hard to get the um, filament structure of MRB because MRB is very easy to aggregate. Then, you know, Young Lewis group, of course, you know, uh, discovered MRB actually bind to membrane. So if you put lay the MRB 
along a, a, a liposome or support lipid bilayer, MRI be actually form uh, filament. Doublet is a double filament. And differently from actin, it's anti parallel. So you have two filaments going this way. So this is immediately different from the conventional, the classic actin. Classic actin is you know, parallel with each other, even though their folds are almost identical to each other. So then this immediately give you some um, idea. It could be because this polymer, it so simply is regulated by ATP binding, ATP hydrolysis. Now, if you have two filaments going anti-parallel, then that means you can really have a uh, treadmill type of behavior, right? Because you can continuously add or continuously uh, subtracting. So both ends you can have adding and also uh, subtraction. So you won't have this typical type of treadmill behavior of acting. And, and this filament um, also has a certain curvature preference. And I mean, we don't really know their theoretical modeling about the Young's module or you know, persistence or the filament, but we don't really know exactly what it is, but you can deform a lipid. So if you put this filament, form this long filament onto the membrane, then the, the membrane, if the membrane is soft enough, it can deform it, which means that this filament prefers a certain type of curvature, although we don't know what curvature it is, but then that property turned out to be very important for the shape determination. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, if you provide a membrane, it will form polymer. If you take the membrane out, oh, sorry, if you mutate or cut off the membrane binding uh, helix, then it's become aggregates. So they still like to form polymer, but not this type of uh, double filament organized structure. Yes, uh, <laughs> in vivo, we don't have the resolution to see the parallel, anti-parallel filament. Um, there are some cryo ET work has been shown use this simple uh, dub, double film. But I don't think if the resolution is good enough to see the polarity. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you can't see the polarity, but the paper where they showed that it's anti parallel, mm -hmm. they've tried to do some cross linking. Yeah, yeah. Th that's what was approved by, by cross linking. Yeah. 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 So it's a double layer of self-assembly because there is the cell wall, which is yes. self on this, this is again self-assembled and providing coverage. So, so I will tell you, so they form this anti-parallel filaments, then the, um, then the anchor to the membrane, they're all on the same side. So it's a basically like a flat filament, you, this is the membrane. And just you know, both subunits, both uh, filament would be attached to the membrane like this. And immediately after, actually, actually even before the structure of uh, MRIB. Is it purple? Yeah. Okay, um, you're jumping to the conclusion, Sorry. but it is parallel, not perpendicular. So I will show you. There are quite some slides. So the long story short, what um, in vivo imaging very quickly. They found something very interesting. So if you have a cell, again, MRIB only exists in most of those rat-shaped cells, like oval caucus, they don't have MRIB. I mean, some other bacteria have our MRIB, but does not have a, a rat shape. Their MRIB power doing something quite different. But in vivo imaging, so people were able to find some functional MRIB fusion protein that tagged it. Then what they saw inside the cell, they saw MRIB form those filaments along the cylindrical side, not at the cell pole, but they form these long filaments uh, in the middle, not in the middle, but along the short axis cell. And what is the most interesting is that this filament is directionally moving. Every single filament is moving. With the speed about, I think different species, different E. coli is about 10 nanometer per second, bacillus, and uh, we, I think it's about 30 nanometer per second, 20 to 30 nanometer per second. So those filaments here, 
what type of movement is this? Uh, we talk about FTSZ filament also moves, but FTSZ filament is driven by TTPS activity, right? It's also driven by tratamine. And this turn out is not driven by tramine. I this flow actually has so many controversies uh, back and forth. At the beginning, people think that this is tratamine behaviors, but later on, later studies show that if you use a drug called A22, which is a small molecule that binds into the close to the ATP binding pocket that block the phosphate release. So but you know, when you inhibit the ATP hydrolysis activity of uh, um of MRAB and also uh, break up the lateral interaction of those two anti filament, uh, anti parallel filament. So, therefore, then MRAB is not stable. So, people think that if you only have a single filament, MRAB just depolymerize, just become unstable. So, this one you can think is a drug that depolymerizes MRAB filament. If you apply this drug to the cell, they still move, they do not stop. So, this indicate that this movement is not dependent on the polarization of the MIEB, which is really strange at that moment when people saw this. Because we know if you do A22 treatment of the cell, over time, cell going to bulge up. But MIEB filaments are still moving. But what determines this movement is that if you add inhibitors, for example, phosphomycin, which inhibit cell wall synthesis, inhibit the lipid two, which is a cell wall uh, precursor synthesis, or you add penicillin, which you probably all know it's a beta lactam that inhibit the transpeptidase, you know, inhibit the crosslink. So anything that you do to inhibit the cell wall synthesis, this almost like instantaneously stopping. I remember at that time, David Ratner, when they were just made this. Discovery came to Hopkin to give a talk, and he showed the movie. It's really stunning. Like he has those long filaments for bacillus cell. They use the mutant so that they go into very, very long filaments. Uh, then you see those FT, uh, MREB filament just constantly rotating, moving, moving. But like the moment that he added a drug, one of those cell wall drugs, the, all of those filaments like instantaneously just stop moving. It's like immediately effect. Even though at that moment, the cell shape doesn't change. Cell shape change only happens when you allow the cell to grow, which indicating that the cell shape is really emitted by growth, not by any mechanical properties of MRAB, because you stop their movement. Or you can use add N22, then you depolymerize those, so they don't have MRAB polymer, but cells still maintain rat shape. Only if you allow the cell to grow up more, and you recover this wrong shape. Okay, so this is so that at that time there are three groups that simultaneously discovered that MRB exhibits this directional movement, and this directional movement is purely driven by the cell wall synthesis activity, and that's where the moments they start thinking about maybe this type of movement will be related to how MRB maintain the rash shape. And this, we know this is not tratamining behavior or polymer dynamic because you can also do a frap, which you photo bleach the middle part of the filament. You don't see any well, recovery on, on the imaging time scale. You just simply see these filaments when the bleach region continues to move. So this is a very different dynamics from FTSD, right? Yes. It doesn't grow in, in those in those scenarios. So those are assembled MRAB filament. If they do grow, they would grow on both ends. In in E. coli, the filament length is usually I think it's about like one micrometer long. In bacillus, longer I think usually it's about two to three micrometer long. So they they are simple as cell grow. They are simple into those long filament during this type of movement. They do not really go. It's the whole filament moving. It's the whole filament directionally moving. It's very different from FTSC. So what the thickness? Yeah, okay. There are actually some studies uh, 
there are some studies actually use the superposition imaging trying to quantify. I think they think that those bundles can be 40 to 60 nanometers thick. Um, yeah, the, the numbers of one or two, three micrometer also come from that study. So you can think about there are thousands, hundreds, you know, each one is like five nanometers, right? A uh, five nanometer, you, you at least have 200, 300, 400 uh, MREB molecules in each filament. And, and they you likely also can be bundles because if it's just one single one, it's only 12 nanometers based on the cryo-EM study. So this is likely also to be multiple together. Okay. Yes. Can you explain what inhibiting cells? <laughs> inhibiting okay. So I can give you a little. So let me give you this one little. Uh, so MIB actually is a huge complex. So like underneath, this is supposed to see the inner membrane and this is the cell wall, right? Cell wall, I showed is this, you know, lung sugar structure and cross-linked with other strand. Okay, so MIB form this filament under the membrane. Then it actually is a huge protein complex. So this is MIB. Let me see if I can use different colors. It's a um, large protein complex called the uh, elongation. You remember if we talked about this uh, um, division, right? So this actually is the counterpart for elongation of the cell wall. So there you have a protein called uh, RADZ, which the N terminals of RADZ actually has a direct interaction with MREB. RADZ actually has interaction with a couple of other proteins. So one is called MREC. Let me put it over here. Another one called MRED. Those are all fairly conserved, but most importantly, they have two other proteins. One is called RAT A. Another protein is called, let me do, another protein is called PB P2. So this is a cell wall synthesis enzyme. It's a uh, polymerase, which was actually just uh, just discovered like a few years ago that RAT A actually is a polymerase which elongates the glycan chain. PBP2 is the cross linker, right? So the cell wall synthesis involves the polarization of the cell wall and also cross linking. So this is a PBP2 is a cross linker. So there are direct interactions. So this is a whole complex called the division. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, elongation, which is in the part of division. If you remember what we talked about last time, we have this division structure where, where we have FTSZ filament, right? Then we have all the other protein. We have the protein called FTSQ. Then we have uh, L, we have B, then we have the counterpart of the other two enzymes, which one is called FTSW, the other one is called PBP3. So this is called division. So this is involved in division. This is called e involved in the elongation. Now you can see the parallel between those. They are actually so similar to each other. Even though the protein, some of the proteins are completely not homologous, like LBQ are not homologous to those proteins, but the RAT A and PBP2 are parallax of W and PBP3. So now you can think about in if you inhibit the cell wall synthesis, you are basically inhibiting those two enzymes activity. If you stop the polymerase activity, MREB stops. If you stop the cross-linker activity, there are different drugs targeting those activity, MREB stops. And there are some country, if you, you know, delete MREC and MRED, MREB stop. There are some controversies about whether RATZ is required for MREB movement or not. But you can, you can see that this whole complex really dictates MREB's movement. So this is quite different from the FTSZ scenario, where FTSZ 
it just keeps moving by itself. It doesn't really care any of those problems. It just keeps moving by itself or driven by its own GTP hydrolysis activity. Yes. You mean A22? So A22 is a small molecule. I mentioned a little, it binds to MRAB monomer uh, at the ATP binding site. It blocks the phosphate release and also disrupt the lateral interaction of the filament. So if you use that one, you can think about MREB depolymerized. You don't have this double filament anymore. Okay. So there, this type of experiment, when you add cell wall inhibitor, that you stop MREB movement, that gives you a hint that MREB, this type of movement, is driven by the cell wall synthesis activity. So then that they also give a hint maybe that MREB filaments, this movement is a way to tell all those enzymes where you should be, where you should do the synthesis, and that's how it maintains the right shape. Okay, so there are quite some uh, debates right after that, um, right after that, because uh, there are different results coming out from different groups. but. I think right now there is a general sense of how MRB does, uh, you know, coordinate this rat-shaped uh, rat shaped um, behavior. So a couple experiments to show that um, if you do some other perturbation to the cell to change the cell shape, not use the MRB, you do some other outer membrane type of a, uh, mutation, you make the cells very round but you still have MRIB over there. And you still have MRIB filaments moving, everything seems to be fine, but they would move everywhere. You don't have this you know, aligned movement anymore. Okay, so we, we talk about MRIB has a certain level of curvature sensor, sense sensing ability. So here, based on this type of experiment, people start wondering, MRIB may be actually sense the largest curvature. So if we look over here on this surface, you basically have two curvature, right? So one is along the uh, long, attitude, uh, long axis of cell, another is along the short axis of the cell. Now this one has a larger curvature, so that's why it might be like to rotate over here. But for this one, both axis curvature is the same. So that it might be lose this directionality, okay? And there are quite some, also some debate at that time. Um, but I think that now they can all be consistent with each other, which is that if you have some cell defect, for example, your cell has a little dent over here, little dent over there, like, you know, this become not rash shaped. And people discovered that MIB filament has a higher tendency to align in those regions compared to those larger diameter regions. And again, this is considered as a curvature sensitivity of the uh, MRIB filament. What happens is that when you have a MRIB filament over there, somehow the cell membrane is fairly stiff. So MRIB just simply being deformed to match up the membrane curvature but itself has an intrinsic curvature. So if the curvature becomes smaller and smaller, and that's actually will attract more and more MRIB filaments over there. And sometimes the people call this negative Gaussian curvature. I mean, you can calculate you know, this one and this one, so it's a negative value for those two times together. But it's basically say, saying the same thing. If you have some deformation over here, then you are going to attract more MRIB filaments coming over. So now we, we talk about, oh, I erased all those elongation. So if MRIB come here, then the natural idea is that it's going to bring all those cell wall synthesis machinery over. Now, because here you have a smaller diameter, MRIB come here, bring all those enzymes, and they will do a little bit more synthesis over here, then you can actually enlarge the diameter. And that's one of the mechanism people propose to uh, maintain this right-shaped uh, morphology of the cell, okay? 
and would like to go go to there Congress, yeah uh -huh. but then it doesn't do it further it actually gets other than yeah, it, it, MR, yeah, there actually, yeah, MRB itself doesn't do anything. It just bring all those workers here uh, to to uh, do the work over here. But there is also work suggesting MRB actually change the cell wall synthesis activity. So there are work being done. For example, you can. Um, uh, to, you know, you, you can analyze the cell wall composition, right? You can just isolate the cell wall, chop it up, you analyze the sugar content, cross-linker content, chain lens, et cetera. You can do then do the same thing you, to treat the cell with A22 when MRB does not polymerize. Then you isolate the cell wall and analyze the composition. There actually you do see a different structure of the cell wall. So indicating that MRB is not just a passive carrier or shuttle for those cell wall, but somehow change how those uh, peptoglycan are you know, uh, put in or inserted together. It does not mean it's actually changing the enzymatic activity of those enzymes. It could just simply change in the spatial organization of those enzymes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so MRB actually doesn't go to the pole. So what um, there are experiments showing that if somehow, for example, if you have a round cell, then you take out A22, then the cell going to start going into going back to a rat shape. So at that moment, you can actually see when it is this round, this round cell is pretty much like what you are in this cell pole, right? So it might be just simply moving around, still moving around, but as soon as it enters somewhere, you have a more narrow then start getting aligned so basically you move out to this region then become more aligned along the diameter uh, along the cylindrical face of the cell what would happen if there's damage at the point like, oh, because... okay yeah so i mean so all of those are dependent on the curvature sensing ability of the mrib It's it's really the curvature of the membrane. I mean, I think both now finally the two group of. Those things that you that has more no, but here, no, here, yes, here it would have more curvature. Um, but this is not large. So at the pole, your direction are all the same. So they're not aligned, right? If you, if MRIB filament goes over there, then it's not aligned, but it's going to continuously move. Once it's moved out here, this curvature will be larger than the other side. So then they become aligned along the cylindrical part of the cell. Say that again. Huh, yes, that's actually a very good question. So, I mean, those are all hypotheses saying that MRIB is the region where you insert. Actually, people did show that uh, the cell wall synthesis is inserted in patch and mimic where MRIB filament is. So that's where people propose that the cell wall insertion is right at the uh, MRIB filament site. Okay. And the way that the MRIB could modulate those enzymes activity or organization, there are proposals saying that when you have when you have um, one MRIB filament or maybe a bundle, you can actually have multiple enzyme on the bundle. This is the membrane. So you know, we you can coordinate all those enzymes movement spatially. So even though those enzymes are independent of each other, but now they're all coupled on one raft. So therefore, those enzymes can continuously insert towards this one direction. Now, if you can compare this without MRIB over here, your enzyme do a little here, do a little here. They can do insert the uh, uh, peptide, the glycan strand, any other direction, and that could also affect how long they can keep polymerizing the processivity of those enzymes, how well they can get cross-linked. So that might be a way that MRIB filament 
could help coordinate the insertion of those glycan strands. Okay. But then the, again, back to your question, how actually, how would the cell wall activity actually drive MRE-based movement? Um, this actually was very beautifully done with just a paper came out, I think this year. Um, they found something very interesting. <clears throat> So MRIB, if it's moving here, right, let me, I, I will just draw the filaments like this, even though it's not along the longitudinal line. So there is a protein called RAD-Z. It's part of this whole complex elongation. So it was shown that under a um, rich growth condition, like you have very rich media, then you have one protein, I think called PR. Okay, see, it's, this is a kindness. It can actually, uh, if, so if you have rich growth media, then you have a lot more the uh, substrate called the lipid two. So this is a molecule that you need to use. It's like the subunit you use to synthesize the cell wall. This subunit would increase the concentration because one of the enzyme is higher, highly expressed, et cetera. Then this lipid two can actually bind to when this enzyme, this kinase, then will actually phosphorylate this protein, RASA. Then phosphorylate RASA was supposed to contact MRB. Then you put more MRB filament on the surface. So you if you have a slow growth, you have like very few MRB filament. But if you have a rich growth, then you have much more. They say that you have more density of the MRB filament, and that's how you actually increase the cell wall synthesis activity. But but what's strange here is that that work showed that you only increase the number of FTS, uh, number of MRB filaments on the surface, but not the speed. So MRB filament is still moving at the original speed as a poor media, but only have more numbers. We, which I don't know how to explain that. So there are discrepancies between different groups because I would imagine if you have higher amounts of your substrate, like what we have in E. coli, we saw the speed actually goes up. But in bacillus, they only saw you have more MRB filament, but less, uh, the speed actually doesn't really change. So, so that's about MRB, more or less it's really a very brief overview. Um, uh, it is very important for rat shape determination, but uh, like I said, some people say it also has a role in chromosome segregation. It also has a role even in some uh, bacteria that does not have a cell wall. So this is a very interesting protein that we don't really, um, there's still lots of work going on. Oh, one thing I do want to um, mention that this elongation, MREB, So if you take this protein out, MRIB out, the cell becomes spherical, right? But you can suppress this phenotype just simply by overexpress FTSZ in E. coli. So looks like this two complex elongation and division, there are some crosstalks. And we still don't understand how that could happen. Because supposedly you need MRIB to organize all of those proteins together, but if you delete it, take it out, you add in FTSZ, much higher concentration expression level, the cell goes back to the rat shape. And possibly because the rat Z also has interaction with FTSZ, um, you know, it's still a very active uh, area, so we don't know yet, but there are lots of crosstalks, yes. Yeah, yeah. Does MRB have any, uh, is that responsible for? Uh, well, I think that is the, yes, yeah, well, it could be, uh, but I don't see. If, you're coming to the point where the is. I, the I don't know which one is the cause, which one is the consequence. Uh, when you have rich media, um, well, maybe. I, 
I don't recall any dramatic difference in my B expression level. But I can imagine now you can have more cell wall material for the cell to synthesize. Um, but they did not see the MRIB speed change. I mean, you can use the speed more as like, like a way, uh, like a ref, um, indicator of the cell wall synthesis speed, but they only saw the number of filaments increase, but not the speed per filament increase. Um, so I, I don't know how that would. Both of uh, What do you mean? Yeah, you could also, yeah, you, you will also increase. It does reach media increase the diameter. That that is no. I'm just not sure if that is because you have. Uh, I, I'm just not sure if that's because of MREB or MREB just responding to an increased level of a precursor. Why, and, you, why are you all, you mentioned three times that speed doesn't increase, but if there are more MREB. Uh, yeah, you, you could still, so basically it's a product of those two. No. Yeah, yeah, it's a product of your speed and number of filaments that give you, supposedly give you total uh, synthesis sure. activity, right? But when I say I'm a little surprised that speed doesn't increase because this is a process of synthesis, then I would assume that the speed reflects how fast you're polymerizing your glycan chain. If you increase your substrate level, like if you provide more nucleotides for your DNA polymerase, I would imagine the elongation rate would go up. Right, because this is just purely driven by the concentration, which we have seen in E. coli. If we increase the lipid to the precursor concentration, we saw the speed increase. But in bacillus, there are discrepancies between different groups. So one says increase, one says doesn't increase. So we still don't don't know yet. Well, even if there is more material, it has to also reach that synthesis point. I mean, it will have to do by diffusion, right? So, I mean, oh. even if you provide more, it has to reach the right point at the right rate. So, I mean, it's better to do it in more places rather other than, than speed up. Speed. So, maybe, okay, that may be okay, okay, okay. So, what you're this suggesting, me, yeah. Is self -assembly. I like self <laughs> yeah, although people have not been able to do any MRIB work in vitro because it's really, people have not been able to do any MRIB work in vitro unlike the plasma segregation system because this one is really hard to work in vitro. But okay, if, if that hypothesis is true, I would imagine if I increase the substrate level to an even higher level, then I'm going to saturate all available enzymes then I should see the speed increase. Shouldn't that be the case? Because I mean, if you just purely- you know, the When you say substrate, you're meaning- The, the lipid to the precursor for cell wall synthesis. Like I increase it for so high that every single usable enzyme is saturated. So they're not fighting with each other for the available substrate, but then you should see the speed increase. No, I mean, no? it might be full, there will be a certain rate of things get, get added. You mean there are some rate limiting step actually limit yeah, how fast you can go. That could be. And it has to explore conformations and then get, I don't know, for, in whatever way it attacks. Maybe that is rate limiting. You can give all material. But it could material be, yeah, it could be. It could, there is a. Really yeah, it could be, it could be. I, I agree. I mean, it just in truth, I thought if this is not so limited by this, if it is really limited, but the speed is really slow. Like in E. coli, we, oh, actually the speed actually faster than in E. coli because the synthesis speed in E. coli is about eight nanometer per second. Here, the MRIB movement is 10 to 20 nanometer Why per second, so it's already different? fast. I mean, uh, is, is it the amount of material because MRIB and cryptoglycan, whatever, yeah, so I think that is depends on the substrate availability. Like in, 
in bacillus, their substrate availability is much higher than E. coli. E. coli is lower, so that's why it's only eight nanometer percent. When we increase, we can see the speed increase, maybe because that's why we don't see it over here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's already very, very high level. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, maybe will be interesting. So I said that MRB has all those point mutation can tune the wave. So this might be interesting to you or if you wanna do this far. So the waste of MREB mutant can be tuned from 0.8 micrometer to 1.6. And you cannot go any thinner. You can also cannot go any bigger. And in all those uh, MREB mutant, the growth rate actually is almost identical. So you know, we're like you're changing the cell volume without changing the cell growth rate. And I wonder if anyone could do some chromosome segregation studies in this type of cell. So basically you have a factor to manipulate the cell volume and see how that affects the segregation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. So so that's about MREB. Can I continue just finish up with the, uh, the other protein? Yeah, you, okay. Yes. Well, that's the part I was saying that we don't know how this would happen. The only thing I can think of either will be FTSZ take over all the uh, divisome protein because they also have the synthesis and take over the synthesis for the elongation or FTSC come over here and replace MREB because there's some sort of interaction with RAS A. So FTSC start to uh, uh, mediate the elongation synthesis. The what? Yes, yes. If you like deplete rat Z, deplete rat A, uh, depletes MRC, the cell become spherical. Yeah, so so that's why it's called the elongation. Yeah. So, but this is synthetic. These people, I think, have already looked at DNA segregation experimentally. Uh, in thicker, mm -hmm. you know, diametrically thicker, and uh, uh, I think they have mentioned that DNA segregation is affected. Is or is not? Is. Oh, okay. So, that would be uh, interesting. But uh, you, you. Yeah, but is, uh, so I have. So I do. So I can give you the reference where they have. Mm -hmm. Because when I introduced the entropic model, I uh, also okay. mentioned that you know one of these papers they have increased the diameter. Uh -huh. and I didn't know about MREB. Is just, that by MREB or by some other mutation? No, okay. I was not aware. I do the diameter increase. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, yeah, you can, yeah, you can, you, yeah, but that, that's just totally depletes uh, MRIB, you become more spherical. But so, but you, you, no, but the, the beauty of using MRIB point mutant, you still maintain a rat shape. You're not just a spherical, spherical, you lose the symmetry, you lose the, the uh, symmetry, right? But MRIB, you still maintain a rat shape, which has a bigger volume. So that's a different test from a okay, spherical cell. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm just thinking about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the MRE, uh, uh huh. Uh, what do you mean a single ring? Yeah, you can. If you over, yeah. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can actually. People have done that. MREB depletion strength. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I think I made a one mistake. I totally wasn't aware. So, um, hold on. Let me let me think. No, no, no. Okay. So, in MREB de deletion strength, cell is spherical and very fragile. If you overexpress FTSC, you actually enhance the uh, survival viability of the cell, but actually now, actually, I do not remember if it's directly converted back to the rat shape. Um, that's actually, I'm not quite sure. So it, it's, it's, 
usually MRIB deletion is supposed to be really, you know, lethal cell cannot survive. But if you overexpress it, cell can survive. But actually, I don't think it's I, I don't think it's the right shape being restored, but the cell can survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what you mean? Bacterial cells can survive in many different ways uh, as long as they they can divide. Yeah, actually, because you asked that question, now I remember actually we have done some work in MRIB deletion strains. So we can still see FTSZ. Basically, like everywhere FTSZ doesn't have, really have a middle plane to go to, but they would cause constriction. So FTSZ sets up uh, cell wall synthesis still works. Okay, should, should I continue uh, or? Let's take a break because this is interesting. Okay. okay. Uh, I would also, in that break, okay. we can have CI also. He's also he's very interested. I want to talk a bit. Okay, more. That's okay. Point. Okay, okay, that's so fine. Break yeah. Will be good. Okay, okay, that works. Okay. Then we can come back. So, and, and 15 minutes. Okay, all right. Because, mm -hmm. uh, all right. Anyone online has questions? Not me at the moment. Not yet. Okay. All right. So we're coming back in about 15 minutes. Sure. Sure. So these steps, the I think I just said it recently, so I missed you at the end. You asked the question by Emily, what happened? At the end, it avoids, uh, there will be a damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said you understood. It was the ideal confirmation of uh, when I spherical. So the in, at the holes, it's, it is like it's spherical already. But if there's damage, it's going to move there. Yeah, so look, it, yeah. it might be randomly. Goes. It will move there. So let's ask that.
सब लोग चाय पिए 
कौन रह गए देखना पड़ता है देखने उधर रह गए ना उधर है आगे So, so this time I'm going to tell you another protein also very interesting. So Factor has a lot of fun stuff. So this protein called CRESNT. Okay, so people call it C-R-E-S. And when you say this word, you probably know that this is a protein that you call a vector, right? Call a vector for a sentence. And this protein was discovered um, in a top uh, morphology screening. So uh, Chris Jacob Wagner's lab, they did a uh, you know, transposal methogenesis, then they did a microscopy screening. They're, they're just wondering why the cell is always like a half moon. And they discovered this one gene. If you disrupt this one gene, uh, the cell color factor become straight. And then we know that this gene determines the shape of this type of cell. But then, of course, why that is it? So they did quite some studies, and they found that this uh, protein, uh, based on the sequence, is a very homologous to intermediate filaments in eukaryotic cells. It doesn't really mean too much, but basically it's a subskeleton protein. It forms some filamental structure. And when they image this pre-sentence, um, pre protein, GFP uh, chrysanthemum doesn't really work, so they have to do immunofluorescence type of image. But what they saw that this filament, it does form a filament and it's formed at this curvature site of the cell. And precisely just lining over there. And this filament is very stable because, again, our friends strap, if you strap it, it never recovers. Like for hours. I mean, eventually it will recover because you still have some sub-unit sub exchange, but very static. Unlike our uh, FTSC or mean system, you recover like in seconds. Time. So this does not recover until one or two generations. So it's a very static structure. And what's even more interesting for this element is that they identified on this protein. So this protein, I think it's about 47 kg. Uh, it's a you know, it's a bird, it's basically like an inter, uh, intermediate element. It's itself that looks like this. And they identified on this protein that there is a N terminal there are about 20 amino acids. If you delete that amino acid that has a hepatic helix, this filament originally like this would 
detach from the self. If they express that dominant and active Newton and become a very different structure, still filamentous, but they become like this a curved, lap handed filament just floating inside the cell. Now, of course, if you, you, you leave this one for now, the cell becomes straight. So, this one is very long. I think the pH is about 1.4 micrometer. It's always filamentous. Um, and if this one is like this, the cell just you know, lose the function. So that's where they say, okay, this protein, this filament has to be attached to the membrane in order to have this function. So that's the first thing clue that they did use about this one protein. But then you also think about if my filament is so stable over here, how does the cell divide? When the cell divides, you have to cut in the middle. Um, it does cut in the middle, but what they found out is that if you have this lung filament inside the uh, cell and very stable, it does cause cell division defect. Or if you overexpress this protein inside the cell, cell also has a uh, cell division defect. So just because it's such a stable structure, looks like you have some difficulty to, to cut this one in half. But what's even more interesting for, for this one, uh, me, so th those are just basically genetic experiment to show that you need these filaments to maintain the shell cell shape. But again, the question is how, you know, what is the mechanism for this one? So to figure out the mechanism. Well, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, if you remove this protein and it forms into a dot shape, uh, are all the other life processes maintained? The others are not changed. It just you change the shape. So the shape is not necessary for the well, for you if shape, you're so. looking at, for example, like the chromosome segregation or you're looking at the metabolism rate, those do not change. There might be a small defect for chromosome segregation in those, but largely you don't see a dramatic change because the shape change happens in uh, you know, one or two or three generations. And, and also, when they launch this one off again, you don't see the shape change right away. Only when you grow the cells, they become straight. Again, they suggest that this is a wall mediated effect, right? Because it's not a mechanical property. If it's a mechanical property, the moment you launch it off in the membrane, the cell shape should change, right? So this again is a cell wall uh, mediated effect. So, but then that you, what you ask is a good question, but then you say, why does colobacter maintain this shape? What's the role of having a particular cell shape? I don't really know. <laughs> so cell shapes, um, I mean, why a particular bacteria cell adopts a particular shape? There are lots of reasons could be for it. And I don't know specifically why a bacteria would be like this. Uh, but in the past, the people think that the cell shape really help cells uh, motility, like when they're moving. Uh, it changes their swim patterns. For example, Colobacter only has one polar flagella. So this uh, uh, crescent shape will change how uh, Colobacter swim and finding nutrient in their chemotaxia, et cetera. And also the shape also has a role in the mechanical stability of the cell, how much stress you can handle. So I think all of those come into play, but when you ask you why it has to be precise addition, I really don't know. I think there are still lots of work studies um, so uh, when this colobacter divides, uh, so there is an attachment to the substratum from the other end of the crescent as well. Uh, what do you mean? You mean when it divides? Yes. This one does break in the middle. Yeah, yes. so it it gets attached. I don't know if this is just correct. It gets attached from the other end. The no, it's, it, well, um, you, you actually, they did a time lapse to see how the filament grow. So they can actually assemble de novo, which means that if you start with this straight cell, then you start inducing the expression of this protein, you can actually see the filament start growing. It's grow very rapidly. It just by itself, it can start growing, become this one. But as soon as it's attached to one side of the membrane, this membrane becomes, uh, become a curve and it doesn't go into the cell hole 
it's always so she's go very rapidly and but then stops at the cell phone, it's never go into a cell phone. So people still don't know why it is the case. Then once it's form this filament structure, you have very, very slow exchange. You know, you still have monomer coming, so these filaments over generations become thicker, uh, over hours of time become thicker, but you don't see this very rapidly growth anymore. My question was when it divides, suppose, mm -hmm. is there any, so it's like this, right? So, is there any, so from one end, it's attached to the other. You mean this one? Yeah, and the two two ends of the crescent. Uh -huh. Does it also get attached to the substratum from the other end of the cell? Well, it's not attached at the end. Based on what we know, it's not attached at the end. It's actually attached. No, I'm talking about the, the cell, cell whole attaching cell. to the... Substrate. Oh, you mean you mean mm -hmm. this one? Yes, yes. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Sorry, I did not understand. So this is a um, colobacter has a polarity, so this right. called stop, yes, right? Yes. So we need to divide yeah. what yeah. we're going to have things. Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, I think yeah, I think stop. which and so they are still going to develop a stop. Uh, yeah, this is going to become the new stop. Is that right? So um, I heard one. Yeah, so it, it, it divides, then um, it divides. Yeah, it becomes a swarmer. Yeah, it yeah. divides, and yeah. this will become. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right. This yeah. you're asking the cell cycle. Is that right? So yeah. when this one divides, this one becomes a swarmer cell, mm -hmm. just flow away. But at one point, the swarmer cell would come down and develop the stump over here. And no, no, I'm just trying to think of a reason for having the present. Like, oh, the reason does to this, this shape help in division in some ways or whatever. Oh, not really. I don't know. You mean right. whether this is shape actually help in the cell division? Yeah. I don't know. But but people know that if you don't have this protein, if you have this straight cell, mm -hmm. they still divide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they still divide. I and it asymmetrical it's... division skill. Asymmetry because on one end you have a swap well, and the other yeah, end you have a. Yeah, it's still asymmetric. It's just a shape is different, but you still asymmetric. You still have, you still have to stop on the other side. The other side you are still going to mm -hmm. so swap So it's yes. still a, a symmetric, just a shape being different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I think in this type of experiment, what they found is really interesting. So they used uh, um this is uh, Christian Jacob Wagner's work. So what they show is that. If you start with the uh, filamentous cell, you, you can inhibit just the expression. So the cell doesn't divide and become very filamentous. And because the long filamentous, then you can have all the stores with different curvature, then they start inducing this protein's expression. And now this filament can pretty much attach anywhere at the beginning, it just very rapidly grows. So it doesn't have any selectivity, it just attach anywhere. But what happens, wherever it's attached, it's become curved. It's, for example, if it's attached over here, over time, it's actually the, the cell actually become curved inside. So, so in a way that this, this filament really dictates where your curvature is going to be, and it can change the cell shape. Wherever it's attached, then become this type of curved um, uh, structure. And even more interesting is that they took this protein expressed in E. coli. Guess what happened in E. coli? Become curved too. It, it's really amazing. Um, so if you put it, so the you know, way that this one single protein in E. e. coli in a different organism still also causes a curved shape. So that was quite surprising, right? Because you, you could think about E. coli has a totally different, not completely different, but very different protein protein reactions, right? So if this is mediated through some type of cell wall, since this is, I would imagine those interactions would be different, but actually not too different because expressing E. coli, E. coli also become uh, uh, curved. Why follow up with the protein is not going to the other surface? Uh, what the, you what do you mean with the other the, 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 the 
You mean here? What you mean the filament? Why it doesn't go from here? Well, the filament has to be attached to the inner membrane. So the inner membrane of the opposite membrane. You mean attached like this? Well, I think what determines is where the membrane anchor is facing. If the membrane anchor is facing this way, you can only attach this. Is that just the opposite direction? How would you do that? You can't, right? Because if the membrane is all if the membrane anchor is always here, hmm. how do you attach? You have to change the filament in order to attach on the other side, right? It's so you pass from filament and then it is moving here. Yeah, so when the protein is expressed, it's mm -hmm. always attached to the membrane. And I think it's because of the membrane attachment segment mm -hmm. and terminus is on this side. So therefore it can only attach I mean, if you have a straight membrane, it's still attached, but that's attached and the membrane has this curvature, it's automatically would, would deform the membrane, then also allow the cell wall to take that form. For example, if it is in E. coli cell, it is similar to the upper surface, right? Yeah. Well, so then E. coli become curved. No, so no, it's not. Is there, right? What do you mean? Passing. Passing is something process. like that. Say, uh, so this was a cell, whether it be fully or uh, uh -huh. whatever. And if it gets attached here, uh -huh. then this will become curved. Become curved because this part. But, but why does this go? It could also have been like this. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, why is it curved? I'm not saying the other side is perfectly straight. I'm just saying that the cell become this side become. Up. And it also has been. If it got uh, attached both here and here, it will become something like. You could. You yeah. could. That's what yeah. you're asking, right? You could. Why did you No. But I, I have that question. Yeah, no. Oh. It can also no, happen like that, happen. right? I think this could happen. The only thing that in the imaging, you can only see one long filament. You don't see two filaments right back to each other. I think it has got to do with. They, they show uh, they have some cloud EM structures, uh, um, but I don't think they have a cloud EM filament structure. They have the cloud EM just bundles on the uh, micros, uh, microscope. So they, they can see actually those long filaments. But I, those long filaments, they do have a curvature, but not like this. I mean, those long polymers, they always have this so type of fibers. So what I would imagine is when, say, when the filament is forming on the membrane, so first it can uh, attach. And then as the filament forms, the filament is curved, and so it's making the membrane curved as well. It's what I would think. I, I, okay, I will come back to that. As you turn out, you, you notice this actually is different, right? If yeah. you don't have a membrane attachment, the filament appears to be a coil. And when it is attached to the membrane, it's more stretched out, right? It's so straight. This turn out actually to be was proposed to be actually a very important mechanism for how this filament regulate cell so, uh, regulate the cell shape. Okay, I, I can tell you about this. So they start looking at how this one can make the cell shape, and they did some. The first of all, for um, 
but I should draw this one to a more space uh, just to differentiate. So we first uh, to analyze the cell wall composition of those two types of cells. There's no difference, basically. So this one changed the cell shape not by changing the cell wall composition or the structure, like in the case for MRIB, right? MRIB, we talk about if you inhibit your cell wall structure as you change it. Here, there's no changes at all, okay? And then the next thing that they did is they say that um, if it, it doesn't change the cell wall, what about the cell wall synthesis rate? Well, they did a very interesting experiment that they, they can use a probe, which is a, one of those cell wall labeling probe. It's a precursor, it's a D amino acid. You just add it to, to the cell, then you, you, know, you, you add it to the cell, then the whole cell wall is labeled, right? Then you can do imaging. But then after they did that for one generation, like the whole wall is covered by this, uh, by this uh, uh, label. Off. Like the whole cell was covered by this label. But then they dilute the label out. So this is a typical pulse chase experiment. And you let the cell grow in this media without the probe for another you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes. So you have a pulse chase experiment. Then what they saw is that then because you have this period of no labeling, you're going to have a clear zone in the middle that the Colobacter's uh, cell wall synthesis unit is all homogenous. When cell is about to divide, they have a middle part that's constituted for cell wall synthesis. Okay. So this part is basically says uh, during this chase and period, how much of my uh, those uh, how much new synthesis being generated, right? So what they saw in this straight cell, those two sides are almost the same. I think that's 270 nanometer, 280 nanometer measurement. But for this, this shape itself, we saw this shape. So I think this one is 350 nanometers, this is only 150 nanometers. You see the shape being different? The shape basically is this shape, a rectangular shape basically is that you have equal synthesis along both sides. Here you have less on this curve side, but you have more on the other side. So that's where they start thinking, okay, okay somehow with my filaments over there, with my filaments over here, somehow the filaments actually restrict how much new synthesis can be incorporated. So that's one evidence they start thinking about, this must be something related to the cell wall, and somehow the presence of crescentin over here, repress the cell wall synthesis. And what could be the mechanism for this? Why this area, you have less synthesis? The what? Can you please continue? Because mm -hmm. the, no, oh, actually, they're covered. Well, okay. They have to reach, right? They have to diffuse through water. So the, okay, the okay. Is okay. that's possible, but why do you need to explain in the region where you don't have the filaments, it's just a gradual, um, it's just a gradual increase. Because you can think about only this strip have no synthesis, but why why you have this gradual change if it's just purely inhibition of the synthesis? Does it also increase the synthesis? No, it doesn't. So it's to repress the synthesis. So it's basically like a zone. When you move away from crescentin, you have higher and higher level of no, I mean, don't have this, the, the normal rate of synthesis is 270 to 80 nanometer. The what? Say that again. Uh, the rate of cell wall synthesis is 270 to 280 nanometer. Yeah, this is just a control. Right? This is just a control where you right. basically show that this is always. But it's the same. same time period you're measuring the same the numbers. So you're also. Kind of increasing the yes. cell walls and yes. yes, yes. So the proposal is this is actually very interesting. I don't know if anyone modeled this one. The proposal is that the cell wall synthesis, as we talked a little earlier about the cell wall uh, structure, right? You basically you have you have those lungs like a chain that being crossed crossing in the middle, right? 
in order for the cell wall to synthesize, you have to cut the old crosslinker, then you can insert a new chain, and which can be crossing with the old chain. So what they are proposing is that to facilitate the cleavage and insertion, your cell wall need to be under a certain, um, need to be more expanded than that would facilitate the cutting. If this one is squished together, either it's not energetically favorable or you don't have enough space for the insertion. So you can think about here, because we talk about this element, you, you usually you cannot attach the membrane, it's uh, coiled. But when they are attached to the membrane, it's stretched out. You can think about if you stretch this whole thing out, right? Because you are stretching, then correspondingly, you're going to have a compression on your membrane. So you know, when you're compressing the membrane or over here, but here you're stretching it out. So you would have more insertion over here and less insertion over here. So this is purely a proposed mechanical model for how this quesitin uh, modulates the curvature. Do you guys buy this hypothesis? Consequence of it being stretched out, the arc is also because of the inner curvature. Uh, because it's stretched out, I think. In the absence of cell wall synthesis. Oh, the, then it doesn't happen. So the outer, the outer wall is uh, more stretched out because of the curvature of the body. Yes. yes, yes. So because when you have a crescent over there, that will be the case. I did not. I do not buy this hypothesis at the beginning until they showed one actual experiment, uh, which is very interesting. They take those cells, divide it of these proteins with these strip cells, right? Without this protein, it then they inhibit the cell division so that they can go to long filaments, you know, which is to amplify the effect. Then the, what they did, they, they made a microfluidic chamber, spherical in this round. Then they draw this. Uh, all those cells in this chamber because your inhibitor cell division, they would have to go into lung spirals, right? Mm -hmm. They grow into lung spirals without this protein. This is like a mechanically uh, forcing the cell to go into this shape. When they grow into this shape, then they take the cells out from the well, then the cell originally like this. And if you let it to grow out, guess what happened? Because the inner, inner wall will be slightly inner. Uh, what become what? Because it's circular, the inner wall will be slightly more squeezed than the outer wall. Yeah, but now you don't have the mechanical property anymore. You don't have anything. So when you take this cell out like this, they maintain this shape, which means that they have already done all the synthesis and more made on that one shape. Side. What? More on one side, they made more synthesis on yes, one side. Exactly. With a so this one basically says that you can actually can, you can restrain the cell by putting that mechanic pressure. You can make cell into the shape without using a protein. So this will be consistent with their hypothesis. If you apply a certain mechanical force, you can make the cell grow more on one side and less on one side. And if you let this one grow out without any mechanical pressure, they become long and less curved because now you don't have the uh, uh, strain on both sides anymore, then they just naturally grow out. And if you stop the synthesis by using some other drug or clinical, et cetera, the cell just simply go to keep the shape forever. I mean, of course, eventually they will die. So I thought this experiment would be it is a strong support. I mean, I don't think it's completely proven, but it does support their hypothesis that this mechanical pressure actually somehow modulates the synthesis rate. But this is not the head of the story. What's interesting is that when they express this protein in E. coli, I told you, right? So it makes E. coli also curved. And they are just wondering why this would be the case. Then they did the one immunoprecipitation experiment where they pulled down on crescent 
uh, in E. coli, guess what protein we pulled out? Can you guess? We just talked about it. What is it? We just talked about it. MIUB. MIUB came down. MIUB actually turned out um, form a complex. We still don't know. <laughs> no one actually knows the structure. So MIUB actually form a complex when it's present, both in E. coli and also in Colorback. We don't know how actually this works, but if we depolymerize MREB in Colobacter, this whole thing would also fall off because it's coil shape. So that's where they think that MREB is important for this protein question to be attached to the membrane. But again, we don't really know how this geometry would work. But MREB turned out again, it's another very important factor in Colobacter and appears to be working with present to make this curvature. Is that so? Yes, we've done this experiment with E. coli. Um, this one was not done in E. coli. This one was done in Colobacter, where they use this division percentage cell. I'm pretty sure you are going to see the same thing in E. coli, because this is a mechanical property, right? That's this, this potential uh, cell was generic to the composition of the cell. Yeah, well, because what they're proposing is this mechanical strain when you when you push the dragon strand too close to each other, that somehow creates problem for the insertion of new strands. So you have slower uh, cell wall synthesis. Okay, so I think that's the story about uh, is that's the story about the presenting, which I think it's a very interesting story. Basically, shows how. Um, how the cell actually, you know, using all sorts of different ways uh, to to modulate the cell shape, uh, and you can also imagine maybe the turbulent pressure inside the cell has another role, which is that keep your cell expanded so that you always have that tension, and that will facilitate the insertion of the glycan strand. And when you change the shape, you know, um, the corresponding pressure on your cell wall is different, and that could also Different cell shapes. So, so that is it known as MRE parallel to presenting or what? Is parallel to presenting or what does it maintain? Oh, the, it's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, MRE being called a factor also looks yeah. very similar, very similar. But what's MRB in called factor is a little uh, different from the other two. Um, during this vegetative growth, it's basically like everywhere, like those short filaments. But when cell is about to divide, MRAB actually come to the middle together with that TCD ring. And then that's where the insertion of the cell wall synthesis is. So with respect to presenting, how I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, when I read the paper some time ago, I was just wondering how. I just don't know. I mean, they must form a complex, but I just cannot imagine what type of complex. Maybe actually, because there are reports in eukaryotes that inter uh, media filaments interact with the actin. So maybe from that type of structure, we can get a clue of how this actually can be arranged. So, so that's it. That's all what I have. By the way, uh, Jacob, please. Ja Jacob, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, Christian Jess. As an eye violating lecture. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. This is really only her lab does this, which is amazing. I mean, there are only like three or four papers about this. Then after that period of time, uh, then they stop and no one follow that. But I thought there are but so many. They even have cells like this. So here, if you see, first of all, they do two things. I don't remember which protein or whatever it elongates. Yeah, yeah. Then they do something. The cell itself is like this. Yeah, you it's can make very a weird. very, very, very long filamentous cell. You can just inhibit cell division and keep growing, keep growing. And then you can actually see a lot of strange uh, filamentous structures inside the cell. Okay, I think that's all. And that concludes all my uh, pedagogical lectures. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you. That's been amazing. Two hours per day or more. I don't know. You guys worked me really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any question online?
Uh, thanks a lot. No, I don't. Yeah. All right. Well, thank I was... you very much for this whole week, and it has been very great. And uh, we certainly learned a lot of things, new things, actually, I would call. I, I'm also learning a lot of news because that forced me to go back to all those, make sure I have the right view. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. See ya. All right, thank you all. Okay, thank you. We'll get in touch. I, you, yeah, you have something to say? Uh, no, I'll talk later with you, yeah? Yeah, we have some spherical, uh, we have a lot of things. I'll tell you and then... Yes, yes. Yeah. Bye, okay. Mithun. Bye. You, you have something to say, Mithun? No, bye. Mithun is not there, it seems. Okay, okay, fine. So I have recording of the last four lectures, not the